Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Residents overjoyed with new road. The frightful scenes of a roadway plunging below to the valley after being hit by tropical storm Eta and Zeta, and the bitter complaints about the inevitable overcharging by taxi drivers that followed have given way a bright new roadway and unbridled happiness for residents who use it daily. Though Garden Town Road in St. Andrew, which was damaged in the devastating November rains, has not officially been declared as completed, residents of the area are grateful that vehicles are now able to drive on it. This new development means the hundreds of people who live in Garden Town, Mavis Bank, Content Gap and surrounding areas will be able to travel via Garden Town Road without the added burden of paying extra transportation fare. Due to the breakaway, some residents living in nearby communities opted to walk or drive on motorcycles on the precarious remainder of the roadway. Motorists had to use the no less hazardous detour through Savage Pen and other alternative routes. One taxi driver and resident, Duane Harris, supported that before the new road, he felt disappointed that he was unable to carry his passengers all the way to their destinations. I had to let off people them halfway and was not able to complete my journey. It is great and wonderful, now because me can do my wando. I can even get to the shop in Garden Town because I couldn't get there unless I get out of my car and walk. So it's more convenient now, Harris said, adding that his passengers are now happy because this is more convenient for them. Peter Powell, a resident of Gilmount, a community close to Garden Town, said he was happy with the work that was done to the road. The road is all right. Everybody feel good because you have people from Mavis Bank, St. Peter's, Content Gap, all of them people they can go home. Everybody feel good now because last Friday night, them couldn't go home. Them used to depend the road until about 12. People can drive on it, he said, adding that he travels to Garden Town regularly and damaged road was very inconvenient for him because he had to walk there instead of taking a taxi. Another Garden Town resident and taxi driver, Damien Baker, said, Everybody happy. Everybody glad said the road finished now, so at least we can go back now to a normal routine. I feel good because at least the people them will live in Mavis Bank and Mount Charles can get to take one bus and go home. Them can drive them personal vehicle and them not have to park and take something else and go cross, so it costs them less. He added, it affected me in many ways because regular customers them are complain, so we leave them out because through the Mavis Bank people them are come down, we now get to carry them. So it did kind of put the damper with our personal customer and we couldn't carry them all the way, he said. Leon Fletcher, who operates a shop on Garden Town Road near the section of the road that was damaged, reported that although the noise and dust from the roadwork had affected her health, she didn't complain because she understood that it was necessary. The noise and the dust nearly killed me, coughing hard and all of them something day, but I just saw so have to go for the work go on because the road did need to fix. We couldn't do anything still, we just have to work with it because at the road them are fixed to the people them. Me used to sorry for just the people them, but me used to get more customer from the workman them and all the people them passing. Me meet a lot of people, me never know see so much people live up there. Fletcher stated, adding that she expects to see a significant drop in sales now that the road is fixed. In February, Cabinet approved a 187 million contract to fix a section of the roadway. Work on the roadway began shortly after, following that contract approval, and late last month, Member of Parliament Juliet Holness announced that repairs were almost complete. We are almost there. The repairs to Garden Town Road break away are almost complete and we are on target as promised for the end of August, Holness stated in a tweet. However, to date, Holness has not announced when the road will be officially opened. 594 new COVID cases, 3 additional deaths. Jamaica recorded 594 new COVID-19 cases and additional 3 deaths on Sunday, according to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The latest data brings total number of corona infections in Jamaica to 76,451 and the death toll to 1,734. The ministry reported that the new cases comprised of 356 females and 238 males.
with ages ranging from 1 day to 96 years. There are currently 24,460 confirmed active cases in Jamaica. In the last 24 hours, 185 persons recovered from the virus. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 103, St. Anne 29, St. Catherine 101, St. Mary 4, St. Thomas 66, St. James 43, Trelawney 15, Westmoreland 23, Manchester 49, Hanover 15, Clarendon 49, St. Elizabeth 62, and Portland 35. The ministry said the deaths occurred between September 10 and 11. The deceased are a 28-year-old female from St. Mary, a 73-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, and a 59-year-old male from Kingston and St. Andrew. Meanwhile, 753 people are presently hospitalized due to the virus, with 155 moderately ill, 117 patients severely ill, and 52 in critical condition. Sisters and nephew among four killed in Clarendon. We heard about this terribly tragic incident which took place here in Havana Heights in Clarendon with four young persons, two sisters and another relative and uh, the baby father of one of the sisters all being murdered last night just after midnight and so we decided to come and because I touched base with the Member of Parliament Lothan Cousins and he encouraged me to come down and just show the family some solidarity and some support at this time of terrible grief and shock. The community as a whole has been going through a series of incidents but this now has taken it to a whole different level and you know, in coming to the house, seeing all the children, meeting the mother of the two sisters who died, seeing the small room in which they were all put on a bed and then executed, it really is shocking, shocking to the conscience. The Jamaica Constabulary Force at this time were offering condolences to the bereaved family and we want to let them know that we are going to be here and to reassure them that we will get to the bottom of this incident because this incident really ought not to happen because people are living with each other and I do not think that dispute, whatever it is, should be settled in a way that it is so heinous. We are one family in spite of we are law enforcement, we are here to provide security and safety for them and when we wake up this morning and to hear about this incident is very tragic. My son is a working hard young man. What's the name of your son? Michael Salaman. Where do you live? Havana Heights, PSP. Yeah. He's a working hard young man. Every day I work. When he not go out, he help me with my farm. Come and run chicken farm. Michael, you're innocent. God, too. Dead left your one son. Only one picking it. Plus your baby mother gone left your baby. Eh? Tell me who, who, who is this baby mother? What's her name? Sharona White, one of his siblings, that, one of them that died. Oh one of the girls that died, Sharona White. You know, the country is going through the worst of times between the COVID situation, which is out of control, doesn't appear to be responding to the measures that have been put in place to try and contain it. The crime situation, murders like this happening, murders up 10% year on year, and then the stresses of the cost of living situation where so many prices have been going up and people really suffering. It is really a very dismal situation. And as leaders in the country, it is important that we get on the ground and show the people that we are here with them and that we care about their plight and just to show that we don't see ourselves as just above them but we are with them so you know we are calling on the minister of national security and the commissioner of police the chief of defense staff of the jdf to ensure that there is adequate security in this community because this situation is one of a series that have taken place but represents a serious escalation and a change to the nature of the violence that has been taking place in here 
and it needs to be contained now so that the community can be freed of further trauma and further grief. I'm truly at a loss for words in respect of the tragedy that has taken place here. As the party leader and the leader of opposition would have indicated earlier, we are calling on the Ministry of National Security to increase the police presence in the space so that we don't have a repeat of what transpired. It is quite unfortunate that incidents like of this nature are happening when we are supposed to have increased police presence in the spaces due to the fact that there is a curfew and the all-island lockdown would have started. We have to work together as a community, as a country, to ensure that we can sleep with our windows and doors open mm -hmm. in the realest sense mm -hmm. and that it is not a fleeting illusion to be pursued but never attained. As a former Minister of National Security, I've been to many murder scenes, but it is few that have struck me as tragic as the scene we have here today. Uh, a quadruple murder is not an everyday thing and the fact that the four victims, as far as we can tell, were not involved in any criminal activity. They were innocent young people. And the trauma to the children who observed the murders. In one case, a, a young boy seeing both parents murdered is must be indescribable pain. All right, now I'm not make you make you. Better me thought I get a bit of an argument in the park outside. I tell you the truth, it doesn't make no sense. I don't have no hopes or nothing. I don't me not go to work out. Yesterday, the last time he called me, I said, Mommy, the chicken them not have no feed. I said, Michael, mm. I soon come, but I sign us up and I give me a little time. I call him back in at 1 o'clock and I say something to him. And I say, You're good? And he say, Yes. And I say, All right, later, boy. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the only normal day in this past week? You stay with him, baby mother, and baby mother I must stay with. It took a long time for the police to respond, notwithstanding that four parts and Maypen are within a couple minutes drive away, both police stations. Um, we, we were able to come to Kingston, from Kingston in about half an hour, and yet it took about that time, as far as I can tell from the community, for the police to respond. This is not good enough. We need more creativity, more initiative from the ministry and the Minister of National Security and from the security forces. Presence in this area is always heightened because even last week Thursday we had an operation and we have several operations um, in Havana Heights it, because it is one of our spots that we keep monitoring. It's problematic. Even last night before the incident occurred, police officers were in here 15 minutes before. So it's not a community that is left up on its own, but we consistently give law enforcement service to the community. What we are going to be doing though is continue on that path and we want to just use um, a collaborative effort with the members of the communities and stakeholders from other places to see how we can improve the service and um, more mixed with law enforcement as also that come into service to treat with the youths and um, the, those persons who are unemployed and so forth. So it's a multi-agency approach we want to use to treat with that, um, what is happening. But I can tell you from a law enforcement perspective, we are always in this space. You have to balance crime control with crime prevention. Crime prevention requires investment in these communities, social investment. The, this administration has abandoned our initiatives around social investment, around partnership, around training um, violence interrupters through the PMI, which will be placed in communities like this to break the cycle of reprisal and counter reprisal. Um, these are all things that don't necessarily cost a lot of money, but with the money sp spent in a targeted way and effectively, it could improve the quality of life and the safety and security of the people tremendously. One year after this government is in power, give them a No, grade. no, one year, five years.
No. Oh, one year of the new administration. One year of the new administration. <laughs> grade them in terms of crime and violence. How would you grade them? Absolute failure. Absolute failure. We have had, from every perspective, um, certainly in terms of serious and violent crime, the most serious and violent crime, murders and shooting, those are up. Despite the fact that we have had the entire country under curfew and lockdown for most of that year. Mm -hmm. And what is even more disturbing in the long run is that the clear up rate for murders is going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Fewer and fewer perpetrators are even being identified so that they can be charged and taken off the streets. So we have seen a fall off in terms of the intelligence gathering capabilities, in terms of the investigative capabilities and the results are what we're seeing here today. The crime situation is progressively getting worse and worse. And as the opposition leader said, we're dealing with a triple C's of crime, COVID, and the cost of living. Community policing is very important. And without the community, policing cannot work. So we want the security forces to understand that notwithstanding the fact that I am an opposition MP, the fight against violence is a fight for all of us, not a, not a few. It is a fight for the PNP, it is a fight for the JLP, and we are united. And it's interesting, we have the opposition spokesperson and security here. During his tenure, crime was going down significantly. He placed great emphasis on community policing. And that is where we went wrong. Because we, have not been, we are not placing the emphasis where it should be placed. Our priorities are misplaced. Building fancy police stations all across Jamaica is not going to lead to a downward trend in crime. Mm -hmm. Police stations in and of themselves mm -hmm. is not the answer, it is not a panacea. What was happening between 2011 and 2016 that led to that serious decline needs to be revisited. Mm -hmm. And they need to consult with us because obviously they don't have the answer, but we do. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.